What's up, everyone? All right, so here we are, Green Friday. I love it. Finishing the week back at all-time highs in my IRA account. Had a little setback on Wednesday, but boom, bounced right back Thursday, $6,800, $6,700, and then today, $2,600. So, you know, $9,000 in the last two days of trading is terrific. It's going to be a really solid week for me. So, the momentum, we are still seeing it. The big mover today, SLNO. I mean, we're just seeing back-to-back -back huge momentum stocks. This is the time to be aggressive, but at the same time, emotions are running higher. So if you're not aggressive in the right places, you're gonna end up buying high and then stopping out and selling low and losing money. So you gotta really know the right place to be a buyer and the right place just to sit on your hands and wait for better opportunities. So I'm really excited this weekend, St. Patty's Day on Sunday, and don't forget Rainbow 30. That coupon code will save you 30% store-wide at Warrior Trading. So you can become a member of the Warrior Trading family. All right, so enjoy the recap today as usual. Questions, comments, leave them below. I'll come back through an answer this afternoon, and I'll see you guys first thing Monday morning, live streaming, 9.15, pre-market analysis. See you guys then. All right, everyone, so uh, we're gonna do midday market recap. I'm gonna finish up the morning here. You know, call it a day a little earlier than I did yesterday, up $2,623.73. So uh, another green day, which is uh, great. I'm happy with that. You know, it's been, um, you know, kind of an interesting week here. A couple um, choppier days, but uh, all's well that ends well. So let's see, um, where's that gonna put me on uh, the week? Uh, let me just, let's see go so that's gonna put me on the week up let's see that was what day was that um, that was Wednesday Tuesday Monday okay so about seventy five hundred dollars seventy eight hundred dollars or so on the week um, you know maybe closer to eight thousand but in any case um, you know not a bad week ten thousand a week is the goal so a little shy of the goal, but um, you know, that's okay. I'm up about 17,000 or so on the month, $3,000 shy of uh, where I would like to be, which is at $20,000 uh, after the first two weeks. So this week has been, you know, a little tricky because we've had some of these stocks like SLNO that are so volatile and on such heavy volume that they really whip around a lot. And this is a perfect example of it here, SLNO consolidating after this nice move up this morning suddenly drops breaks down and then rips back up you know and then drops back down so this is the type of stuff that's really hard for for short-term day traders because it just you know it just chops you up i mean you you get stopped out and then it rips up and then you get in and then it drops back down and so um you know this is all um you know pretty difficult uh keith i'll just put your um uh, your post there into the support room and I'll let them know uh, to reach out to you. Let's see. Um, let's see. All right, so um, anyway, so SLNO, this one, this morning we were watching it. You know, I, I was watching it for a break over $3 as a gap and go. However, it was kind of tricky because it opened right at kind of the pre-market highs. And these ones are a little tough. I, I really like it when they uh, pull back just a little bit so then I can buy it as it surges up for a break through this level. When it opens like right at this level or within like a couple cents of it, it just, it makes it hard. And, and so I hesitated on that. Um, and then next thing you know, boom, it goes from three up to 320. And then it really doesn't pull back. It goes, you know, right up here to 338. Then it does a sharp pullback, hit a high of 338, and it drops all the way to 287, actually going red versus the open price. And then it rips back up to 38. So I got in right here. I got in right there, uh, which was a, looking back, I mean, that was a, a solid entry. However, at the time that I took the entry, the problem for me was that um, it was so thickly traded that I just I didn't know if I could if I could really trust it and I got nervous for a second. So let me um, let's see. Let me pull up this trade here. Um, that was from here. 
All right, so let me just zoom in on this real quick and I'll just really kind of break this down. Um, okay, so, all right, yep, so let's go here. Okay, so I'm gonna pause that for one second. All right. Um, okay, well, that's fine. So, zoom, move this window. Okay. So, this was the trade that I took this morning. Um, I just, so, I just jumped into it uh, with 12,000 shares at 325. All right. So, in this video right here, you can see I'm in it at 325, 12,000 shares. And um, this is what the chart looked like at that moment. It had just dipped down here, you know, on this little wave and was surging back up and so I was like okay you know this looks good but when I take 12,000 shares I'm looking for almost immediate breakout you know I really I'm not I can't afford to sit you know up or down you know 20 cents with that type of size and so I jump in it and we come up to 30 and I was expecting it to break right here I mean I was like this should break over 30 and now you see we've got this kind of big stack of sellers at 27 and it's not breaking over 30. There's 28, 26, now 22. And I'm like, uh oh, you know, I know with 12,000 shares, it's not going to take much for me to be down 1200 bucks, even 1500 or 2000. And I know on the five minute we've got, you know, one, two, three topping tails, uh, you know, and this might be the third one or fourth one. So I'm nervous. Comes back to 25, 26. I'm like, all right, back to 23 on the ask. There's 30, okay. But there's a 17,000 share seller there. 28, 24, 22, 23. And if this thing breaks 20, it's gonna drop back down most likely to 310 like that. And I'll be down, you know, $1,500. So now it comes up again, 27, 28, 29. 28, buyers there 29, and now you see a 20,000 th share seller on NASDAQ, a 13,000 share seller on Edge. Is it gonna break? There we go, it breaks. And so there on that break, I put out an order to sell half and sell half. And you know, generally speaking, for this type of trade, that was a good move. So I took out my profit there, and you know, I'm scalping into that breakout. All right. Now, on these types of setups, um, it certainly wouldn't be the first time. Uh, you know, look at here, back down to 25, and just for a second there, came back down basically, you know, to break even, and now back to 28, 29. At this moment, it looks like a false breakout, and when you get these types of false breakouts, they can flush back down, you know, and they can go all the way back down to, um, you know, three. Well, can go all the way back down to where it came from. So. At that point, I'm like, okay, I'm out. Probably the right move to take that quick profit, right? 29, 30, so, you know, it's just kind of a false breakout. So I'm like, yeah, it's probably the right thing to do. Watching it, 40, 42, 43. All right, well, maybe I sold a little too soon, but, you know, that's still, you know, probably was the right move. Okay, 48, 49, and then here I'm like, God dang it. <laughs> You know, because now I'm like, well, geez, this is up 30 cents. Hmm. You know, that would have been three thousand dollars of profit if I'd held it. Um, all right. Well, back to 45. So, all right. You know, maybe I still did the right thing. You know, I took my profit and you know, that was, you know, that was that was probably OK. It only hit 55 and then it pulled back down. It's you know probably not going to you know go that much higher. Anyways, this is extended. I can't really get back in it up here. You know, it's all right. Well, back to 55 on the ask. 55, you know, so it's kind of like hitting that level, a little bit of a ceiling, you know, dropping back down, 47, 46. So, you know, this was sort of what it was doing, you know, popping up, pulling back, popping up, pulling back. And, you know, of course, what it's going to end up doing here is, is breaking 355 and, you know, going up to 365 and 370, and it ends up hitting a high of like, you know, well, you know, let's go back and see what the high of day is. Um, you know, the high of day on this is um, four, you know, 460. 
And, you know, I'll tell you, hindsight is always 2020. It's always easy to look back and think, oh, man. But here's the deal. Remember yesterday on ATOS? ATOS, I did a very similar trade, and it popped up, and it came all the way back down, and it gave back $4,000 of profit. You know, I, I just was like, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to take my profit. It's Friday. I'm going to pay myself. And, you know, I did end up getting back into SLNO um, way up here um, on, let's see, it was um, right here. I got back in because it was kind of doing something similar here, you know, sort of consolidating. So I got back in here at 20 and I stopped out at, uh, got back in at 420, stopped out at 4, 411 and it drops here all the way down to 374 and then it rips back up. So, you know, this was just kind of some frustrating stuff, not the easiest to trade, but Green is good, you know, $850, that's fine. I was a little more conservative the way I started the day on it, uh, not jumping in right for the break of three. And then, um, you know, that kind of put me behind the ball. The volume is super high, it's more crowded, a little bit more whipping, tug of war, short sellers, long traders battling it out. And so not as you know easy to trade on a one minute chart. So, you know, that's SLNO, um, RVP, was a high day momentum scanner alert. I jumped into that one. Uh, you can see here it squeezed up to a high of $1.20, pulled back, did a five minute breakout here up to a high of $1.34. Uh, it's still up 40%. So um, that one was a small scalp, 650 bucks. And then CLRB was also a scalp off the high day momentum scanner in at 46, uh, 9,000 shares popping up here to a high of 65 dropping back down coming back up here which was nice back up to 60 and you know whatever sold for basically 10 11 cents of profit a small win relatively speaking i really want to see it break over 65 or if not at least hold a good kind of pattern through this area for a flag but it came right down now this is a biosciences stock uh, of course slno is biosciences BPTH, biosciences, ATOS, you know, we're seeing a lot of these genetics, therapeutics, bioscience stocks uh, with a lot of strength. So I'm pretty quick to jump on ones that hit the scanner and look good. Uh, CLRB is a former runner that we've traded in the past. I saw PHAS hit the scanner um, and it's got a pre-mark, it's got a high of uh, 95. This one, you know, on the daily, somewhat interesting, especially if it broke over six but it's not a former runner. It's not one I'm really familiar with. And so I didn't want to jump in it as quickly. I kind of wanted to see, well, is it going to hold up? Is it going to make a move higher? And it didn't. So it didn't give me um, any, any entry. So anyways, you know, like I said, you know, a, a green day, which is good. Finishing the week on a green note. I seem to have lost my pen um, for writing my calendar here, but I get, I'll get to it later. So it's the 49th day of the year for me, um, you know, still maintaining pretty much that $3,000 per day average, 6,700 yesterday, 3,000 today. Um, Derek, how do I scroll through the level two on light speed? Um, you can't scroll through it, but you can open up the window to make it bigger. Um, I mean, it might be possible in the settings to turn on scroll bars, but I don't have them turned on. And I'm not even sure if that's an option. So, yeah, um, but yeah, so anyways, uh, you know, just kind of building up the IRA account tax-free here. Uh, so 124,000 today, we'll go up to 126,000. But realistically, my biggest position today was, um, well, 12,000 shares of SLNO at 325. So, you know, I mean, it's like a $40,000 position. So I'm not using the majority of my, of my buying power. Um, not even close to it today, but I can't take money out of this account until retirement age without you know taking a penalty on it. Uh, I could take money out and move it into um, like long term investments because I don't think I would like I could buy like you know the S and P five like uh, SPY ETF for instance. If I want to buy an ETF, just park the money there and be like, yeah, I'm just going to park it there for the next five years or ten years, but I don't want to log in every day and see that position, you know, being up and down. I think that's really going to throw me off. Um, so I would be more inclined to 
at certain points withdraw capital from this IRA and um, transfer it to a, a different IRA that I only look at like once a month. You know, if I'm really going to put it away for long term, looking at it every day is going to drive me nuts. So, um, but in any case, the goal this year was to trade mostly in the IRA because it's tax free gains. And I've been doing that. Started the year with $29,000 and I'm up, uh, you know, almost a hundred grand um, just this year. So, you know, 300% growth just about uh, in, the, in this IRA, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, um, you know, gonna keep that going. My main account here, $42,000, lost like five grand in it earlier this month. Um, you know, so, I, and I haven't been trading in it since then, just mostly because I'm focusing on this account and focus trading on two accounts at the same time is uh, kind of difficult, especially with my strategy. So that's fine. I mean, I, I, on the one hand, I'm like, yeah, it'd be nice to make back that 5,000. But on the other hand, I'm like, well, you know, what's really the point of trying to trade in this account because I'm just gonna have to pay income tax on it. So I can short in this account, uh, but not a lot of shares available to borrow. And so then that's why I have my center point account, but I haven't been using that one a whole lot either. Only made about $800 in that account this week. So anyways, uh, green day here, nice way to finish the week. Uh, you know, we'll kind of rest up on the weekend, St. Patty's Day this weekend, which is exciting. And then I will see you guys all back here on Monday morning around 9, 9.15 for our pre-market analysis. Hopefully this um, hot momentum we've been seeing continues. It hasn't maybe been the absolute easiest to trade when emotions are running as high as they've been running, but um, you know, making money and, and staying green. So that's what it's all about. All right, again, uh, Warrior Pro students really encourage you guys to attend FOMO Friday at 3 p.m. with our in-house trading counselor, uh, Ted, trading therapist. And then Mindful Monday, um, Monday at um, 8, is it 8 a.m. or 8.30? I think it starts at 8 a.m. Monday at 8 a.m., uh, join Mindful Monday led by Ted. So start the week and end the week by getting centered, getting grounded. Um, I'm going to have a session with Ted, Ted in about six minutes, and we'll be talking about uh, me losing you know, $5,800 on Wednesday and then getting kind of emotional and you know, going back and trying to be aggressive on um you know, Thursday, made the money back, but felt like I was being a little too aggressive. So, you know, these sessions are really good for, for me, and I know they're good for you guys. Inner Circle students, you get to book one-on-one -on -one sessions with Ted as well. So make sure you guys take advantage of it. All right, everyone, enjoy the weekend. We'll be back at it first thing on Monday morning. If you're still watching, you must have really enjoyed that video. So why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content? Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.